Yeah, yeah, we're, that's it. We're uh, taping. Mm -hmm. So I'll just talk loud. Mrs. Mill, can you tell us how you came to come to Sylvan Beach and to White Lake? Well, we were rather an anachronism, I think, because most people come because of friends that they have. They come to visit and they fall in love with the place and then stay. We heard when we were living in Chicago what a great uh, yacht club that you have here at, at White Lake. So we sailed in here and loved it so much that we came planned the next year to come back and, and uh, spend a week here with Jim going back to Chicago uh, and working. And then our great dream was that we would take our sailboat and sail into Mackinac Island. We never did that <laughs> because of White Lake. Uh, in that week, the children and I just thought this was the greatest place on earth. And they, when Jim arrived back, he was bombarded by the children and myself to stay the next day because it was White Lake Day, we did, and uh, we became acquainted with uh, Jim Burroughs and uh, at the dance that night, and uh, and we sailed off um, the next day, but couldn't go as far as Mackinac Island. Came back and did just exactly what he said. He said Jim Burroughs had said you you should buy a boat for John. You should sell your big boat and rent a cottage and come back here. And we did that. The, the following year, we were here with a with Ann, with a, a boat from the boroughs for a Y flyer for John. And we had sold our our King's cruiser and um, a sailing boat. And uh, we were here and then bought a, bought this cottage from the Macabs during that summer of 1962. And it's just been a part of our family's life ever since and uh, so much so that when uh, when later uh, Jim died I decided to sell the retirement house that we had in Savannah and uh, remodel this cottage into my permanent home and I've never regretted it because it this is home hometown to our children so this is their home yeah this is their mm -hmm. home. we moved around a great deal so it uh, no one place meant that much to the children and uh, particularly the south didn't mean that much to Anne. <laughs> <Up here. laughs> <Nor John, laughs> yeah. so that but this place because as soon as we as we were going to Houston Texas um, we had bought this cottage and we returned every summer uh, from Texas that meant Jim commuted from Houston in the summertime which sounds ridiculous but he did and then he commuted from Greenwich Connecticut when we moved there and then by that time, the children were growing up and, and off to college, and but coming back on their own, on their own terms and in their own time, <laughs> which is what they're doing now. Okay, so your first year here was really 1962. Yes. And, uh, wasn't the uh, purchase of this cottage the result of a cocktail party? To... Yes, it was. It was uh, uh, the boroughs had invited us for cocktails and. Uh, Piffy Hunter, during the, the evening, uh, had said, I had mentioned that I love Lake Michigan, have loved it since I was two, and maybe in 10 years or so there might be a cottage on Lake Michigan, somewhere near the White Lake Yacht Club. And she said, there's one for sale right now. And so as we were leaving, I mentioned to Jim that uh, Piffy Hunter had said there was a cottage for sale in Sylvan on, on Lake Michigan. He said, oh, yes. Let's go down there right now. So they did, and we met the Macabs. Jim Jim Burroughs introduced us to the Macabs, and we looked through the the cottage. And uh, Jim said, uh, "I'll take it." <laughs> and the the family uh, fun with that was that Jim and I had just decided we did things in too big a hurry, and we were going to talk things over. So I said, "Jim," uh, and we went over to the side of the yard and I said you know we were going to talk these things over instead of doing them in a hurry and he said uh, so we talked <laughs> thank goodness because a few months later we moved to Houston Texas and if we hadn't purchased a cottage we wouldn't be here now probably we would have uh, we would have been sailing Sail in the Buffalo Bayou and, and <laughs> which was uh, and that was the option and, and probably that's the way we would have gone because the distance was great yeah so I'm glad we had this and could come back that's nice and didn't one of your children marry uh, somebody from Sylvan Beach oh too? yes Bob married the girl next door the girl next door uh, Bunny now Mary uh, <laughs> Uh, Johnston and I I had the joy of meeting her 
and all of her family when she was eight years old and Bob was eight. And so we've, and that, that doesn't happen to too many people that they know their daughter-in-law since age eight. No, that's yeah, pretty, that's pretty nice. That's pretty rare. Well, that's exciting. Uh, Mrs. Milne, uh, it wasn't long after you came here that, as I remember, you became president of Sylvan Beach, too. Can you tell us uh, uh, how, how you were involved and what you did and, and what would uh, make you become president? And that's a very oh, I think it just, sometimes. It, just, it was just happenstance. Uh, I had worked on the board, um, and it was, we came in 62, and it was in the 70s that, uh, that I was uh, president, and I went on the board, and, and it, timing was just that they needed, they needed uh, someone, and uh, others felt I could do it, and I was willing, and so I was. <laughs> That, that's just that's usually the way these things work out and uh, <laughs> it was a very rewarding um, position to take though I, I enjoyed knowing more of what goes on at Sylvan and uh, so all of all my time on the board was was uh, uh, I, I was activities chairman which generally was a woman's position mm -hmm. first and uh, and uh, that's these things have changed so much over the years because the needs of the community change, um, uh, the demographics change. We, we went through a period with very few little children, so we didn't need the same kind of activities, the same uh, uh, lifeguard and so on that we Person had had. lived in the Watt Club yeah. at one time. And, yeah. Yeah, and that was before my time mm -hmm. that they did that. And, uh, and then, of course, the Watt Club burned down and and over over time, this was after my uh, my tour of duty. But uh, it it's an interesting place. They it's a community of diverse people in many respects, pers diverse personalities, but with such a common uh, f generous feeling toward each other. They uh, everyone. It's a our co cottages are close together. So you have, and I say this as an outsider coming, uh, because most everybody's been here much longer than we, but you get such a sense of, of people extending uh, the courtesy of privacy uh, to their neighbor or uh, neighbors down the way a little bit, because we do live so close together. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, um, it's a very, very pleasant place. And for outsiders coming as we did, uh, we the community couldn't have been more generous to us. They were just delightful. Uh-huh. Uh, Mr. Milne, can you tell us something maybe about, uh, you have three children, can you tell us about what they did here when they first came here and uh, the activities that, that, that they were in? Uh, uh, perhaps a story about something one of your children did or anything that might be... Uh, well, our first emphasis was for John, being the oldest, we wanted him to get into sailing. And uh, it was such a great opportunity. He'd had a little sailing at um, uh, Camp, um, hmm, can't remember the name of it, just north of here, <laughs> at Stony Lake. And, uh, but to be able to sail his own boat was the, we, we had a great desire, not having been able to do that as children ourselves, Jim and I, we were eager for this, and then each each one in turn, Ann took sailing school and then Bob took sailing school. And uh, they, I think it was, uh, well, they just had fun. They had fun and they enjoyed it and I think it's a good learning situation. And uh, I took sailing school and I have some, I have some memories that I cherish when, <laughs> when you, Joe Pitkin, and my son, John, were both instructors and I had not wanted to um, jibe around the mark, so instead <laughs> I went the other way around, and, which was clearly wrong to do, but <laughs> it was easier. It was a lot easier. <laughs> and then when, then when we had our critique afterwards, I got royally chewed out. <laughs> Who was your teacher? <laughs> I had Jack Chatain. Oh, Jack Chatain, mm -hmm. okay. Oh. I enjoyed that. And then Anne, uh, Anne John moved on to a, a sea scow, and Ann took over the Y flyer, and uh, and there was a Y flyer that I that I was sailing when I was in uh, um, sailing school, and she and then Ann was um, a junior commodore one year, and um, and then Bob took over. I think he started in uh, butterfly, 
Okay. I think at that, by the time Bob was into it, um, uh, Camp Minnewonka is the name of that camp, and Bob was there for the summer, and while he was there, uh, six weeks, uh, I believe it was, well, I'm not sure how long it was, we bought him a, um, a butterfly so that when he came back, why he could, uh, his age group were, were all getting into that, and it was, unfortunately, it was, it was uh, taking over and crowding the white flyer out because it was an easier boat for people to own and to store and to provide for their children, so it became the, the boat of choice. And uh, which, in some ways, makes me sad, remembering uh, Alvin Youngquist and his uh, design, yeah. which he made available to everybody. And uh, it's a very popular boat, some places in this country, extremely popular. Yeah, I myself always felt bad that we lost the white flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that, that, that was a shame. Uh, Mrs. Milne, you have, now you're very modest about this, but you have done a tremendous amount of work on the history of Sylvan Beach, uh, at least you have, I know you've made t-shirts, I know that we've had uh, uh, mats with uh, uh, the names of each cottage on it, uh, didn't you do that? No, not, oh, you did do not that, the mats, sir. no, uh, that was um, a project of Mr. Myers, um, and that's, he, now I've, I can't recall what he called that, it was, anyway, the idea being so, uh, Sylvan is heaven. Heaven, <laughs> yeah. every name. And so every name was an angel. I okay. think. I thought you did. No, I hadn't done that, and I really got into the T-shirts because I thought we we should have something for our 90th, and uh, just sort of fell into it. And uh, uh, in fact, we 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 got a few sizes and put them all on my family and the Johnston family, and to demonstrate and uh, and see if people wanted them. And then I took orders uh, wow. from that and. Uh, and that was a very popular item, and we still have that format, and we will hope to, whatever the committee plans to do uh, for the 100th, it'll be an extrapolation from that, probably. Well, those were certainly uh, just off the cuff. Those were high-quality shirts, and I still have one myself. They were made very well of good deal of cotton, and they were made to last, <laughs> un unlike many shirts you buy nowadays, that type of thing. Those, those were very nice. As I remember, Mrs. Millen, you also did a, uh, were doing or still doing a book on the families at oh. Sylvan Beach and <laughs> yeah. the uh, children and the... Well, that... Can you tell us something about that? That came out of, a, of a, an innocent remark, like always, you get appointed. <laughs> I said, why don't we... It's so difficult to remember the married names of the children, of the, of the girls, when uh, the offspring of, of families in this community. And why don't we have some, some way of having a record like that so that we can refer to that and, and uh, uh, I think Hell Summer said, well that's a good idea, why don't you do it? <laughs> <laughs> so I did, but I had a lot of help. I, we divided the whole beach up and uh, I remember Barb Wagner and I'm, I can't think of who all helped, but there were a, a number who did. And the only problem was that we each had a different idea of what to gather. So, uh, and you can only put so much in a book because this was going to be um, printed at uh, nominal, nominal cost, hopefully, and then uh, 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 made available to all of the um, shareholders, uh, so that I I had to homogenize later, and uh, that was, you know, I can't remember. I think that was '76 was the first one. Okay. 1976 was the first one that we did, and people found it very useful, and I. And the format seemed to please everyone, although um, over the years we've had many suggestions for additions, additional information, which probably is a good idea. So it went eight years before I did another one, and in 84 I, I updated it, and it was easier to update right from the basic material I had. I just tore the page out of a book and sent it to the family, told them to update it, and they sent it back. And then I, I sometimes, because of change of ownership in cottages, I had to rearrange the book, and uh, uh, but I've, uh, then I did I did one in um, ninety. So eight years went by the first time before it was revised, and then six years went by. And the plan was that I would, I mean, my private plan was that I would do it every five years. And I told Heather and Lindsay that uh, I would show them how so that when I was no longer able to do it, they could take over. <laughs> and I think, uh, although I've done it with 
my hand printing, which some people like. I think, though, in, in some cases, it would be much more legible. If we're, and I intend to put it on a computer, which I have. Only I don't know how to run it yet. <laughs> I'm learning, though, although I think some of my family think that I will never learn because I, you just have to dive in yeah. and, and do it. Which, but I'm right on the threshold of that. It would be very useful, and then it would be very legible, and then easy to make the changes uh, if we're on a computer yes. to uh, each page. And, uh, but it is useful, I, I, particularly to... Uh, the married members, the members, that, the outlaws <laughs> that come, they, they, so many people have told me it's so useful to them, they can, they can begin to get a handle on who is who and who they belong to. And I know the post office, it helps whoever's working there to know which extended family is a part of which group. Yes. And, or which, um, and, I, and then I, our new caretaker and his wife and family have found it useful. But I think it's been useful to uh, um, most of us, even at the end of, of, um, of your winter, you come back and put your summer names back in your head, and uh, I hope that's a help. For well, that. certainly a very good history of people here to a certain extent. It certainly is a tremendous work, the only one that we've had done like that. Well, I think, I think Forbes' book was, 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 the was delightful. Okay. That was delightful, and that really was history, whereas mine is just a documentation of of the names of family members in, in the book. I had no, made no attempt to make it larger than that, other than I tried to say, when there was a family connection, um, a brother of, for instance, Jim Burroughs was a brother of Louise Stewart, and things of that I would note th uh, in by parenthesis, um, in right at that person's name to, to indicate the family connections. And, uh, and it's surprising how many there are. Yes, yeah, there are yes, a lot. It is. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is amazing. It is amazing. Want to take a break right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Turn that on. Make sure we're off. Well, Mrs. Milton, uh, what are you holding there in your hand? Uh, is it all right to take it down you now? Can take it down now. Well, I'm showing it to you because this is what we found when we, I was remodeling, and it says Julia P. Oh, isn't that terrible? Uh, no, it's uh, the Boland is the is the top name, and then Mary M. Proctor, September 1899, and this was in the this was the inner sheathing of the cottage, uh, and we had when we bought it, we covered that up. Uh, it had been covered up with um, uh, some kind of drywall. So when I was taking this all out the old drywall, and having it insulated, we, we discovered these signatures, and I asked uh, Wayne Erickson to saw this out. He said it wasn't necessary for the support of the wall, and I intend to uh, hang it up because it's evidence of who owned this. And then in looking in Forbes' book, uh, I found that, um, I found what I needed to know. And then talking to Midge Forster, she said that, uh, Edna Dean Proctor, uh, and I, I have uh, Emily M. Proctor, uh, is someone that um, Midge Forster knew. Midge was known as Mary Jane Middleton to uh, Edna Dean Proctor, and she was flower girl in her wedding. And she said, I believe the story was that uh, Mrs. Proctor, Edna Dean Proctor's mother, um, I'm, so, I'm a little puzzled at the difference in names, Emily and Edna, but um, uh, the Proctors were renting the Burroughs Cottage, uh, not known as the Burroughs then. Uh, when the season was over, Mrs. Peck said, uh, told Mrs. Peck, the owner of that cottage, that she would buy it if Mrs. Peck would put a second story on it. And um, that's what happened. That cottage, the Burroughs Cottage, was called the Anchorage, and the anchor that's out in front of my cottage was then at the Burroughs Cottage. So the, the Pecks um, raised that cottage, the roof on that cottage, and sold that to the Proctors, and then took over this piece of property and built a cottage here. 
and that's the uh, and amusingly that there was a connection in our coming with the boroughs and that there was a connection in when this was built and as uh, Midge says in a letter to me um, at that time that um, it was uh, uh, the present, your present cottage was born when they uh, decided to raise the roof on the burrows. And uh, so that's the reason. This I intend to frame and put in the cottage. I just haven't been able to, everything is too fancy. <laughs> I, I want a, a kind of um, uh, something that's appropriate. To just to, But this is the way the cottages were. They had an outside sheathing, or they had an outside siding and then just a sheathing on the inside with open studs generally in the beginning. I know that part of this cottage was still that way when we bought it. And uh, I've remodeled, and claims that I've remodeled seven times. If you count the new garage and uh, tearing down the, the old garage and the tool shed, and, uh, perhaps it is seven. Well, that's fascinating to be able to find something from 1899 and to have those names and to find out about them. Uh, I think your light's on there still, Mrs. Moore. We'll turn this off for a second.